I come uh, from a 19th century country, Canada, and this gives me a great advantage in looking at the 20th century. The 20th century is the age of electric technology. It's the most dominant tool of our time. And reevaluate every thought and every institution you formerly took for granted. I know exactly where the boundaries of the begin. Mostly they begin in the United States. So any Canadian can see what you cannot see. That is, you live in the 20th century, more or less, and it becomes therefore invisible. Well, well, obviously his ideas are complex. I mean, he's, yep. he's, a, he's, an, he's, a, he's an intellectual. A special kind of intellectual. And his ideas yeah. are, are in the realm of intellect. Uh, they're, they're complex ideas. But our society is a complex yep. society. There are many people who want things, you know, simplified. Of course, if intellect spoke in simple words, then people like me would be out of work. Well, the title, The Medium is the Massage, is a teaser, a way of getting attention. There's a wonderful sign hanging on a Toronto junkyard which reads, Help Beautify Junkyards. Throw something lovely away today. And this is a very uh, uh, effective way of uh, getting people to notice uh, a lot of things. And uh, so the, uh, the title is intended to draw attention to the fact that a medium is not something neutral. It, it does something to people. It takes hold of them, it roughs them up, it massages them, it bumps them around, and uh, uh, as it were, chiropractically. And uh, the general roughing up that any society gets from a medium, especially a new medium, is what is intended to uh, be indicated in that title. The medium of our time, electric technology, everything from the light bulb, the telephone, to the computer, to jets, to nuclear energy, is changing everything. We are in the middle of a tremendous clash between the old and the new. The medium does things to people, and uh, they are always completely unaware of this. Uh, they uh, don't really notice the new medium that is roughing them up. They uh, think of the old medium uh, because the old medium is always the content of the new medium uh, as movies are, tend to be the content of TV and as books used to be the content, novels used to be the content of movies and so every time a new medium arrives the old medium is the content and it is highly observable, highly noticeable but the real, real roughing up and massaging is done by the new medium and it's, it, it is ignored. The idea that television, computers and the rest are just tools that we use for better or worse isn't true. The way you react to them is what's important, not what's in them or on them. and effective. We are re-entering the old tribal world 
but this time we're going to go through the tribal dance on the tribal dream wide awake. The search for involvement and fill-in takes many forms. It's like drawing cartoons. You can't fill in all this because none of these things happen without some sort of cause or some sort of reason in the minds of other people. The um, discotheque, the go-go, as a form, is an area in which anybody who takes time can make interesting discoveries. Many of the things I talk about I find very irritating. Uh, that's what leads me to investigate them, you know. You, uh, you look around for a hair of the dog that bit you. I, I, uh, I look into many of the uh, new forms simply because I find them uh, very exasperating and irritating and troublesome to uh, peace of mind and so on. And uh, on the other hand, I've discovered to my amazement that if you take some violent and irritating process, say like radio or TV, and start looking at how it works, what it's doing to you and why it's doing it to you, you can get very enthralled, very excited. Television has been labeled sterile. Uh, there is nothing sterile about television, except in the eye of the beholder. The, uh, you know, the, uh, the FCC type of uh, observation of television, the totally irrelevant, totally incapable of coming to grips with this form. Uh, when you speak of sterility, you speak of the movie programs that are shown on TV. Uh, you're not talking about television at all. Marshall McLuhan is a professor of English at the University of Toronto and director of its Center for Culture and Technology. He's the author of several books and hundreds of articles whose sales increase daily and spreads. Suddenly, everybody, press, industry, corporations, and the new youth, have discovered him. And he has become a storm center of extreme controversy. My largest objections to his uh, principle is that he's basically, and uh, this is a distilled view of what I've gotten from his work and from his presence, a whimsical sociologist rather than a penetrating philosopher or a deep-thinking psychologist. The um, ordinary child of our culture is being educated, massaged by the TV form into a state of participation in all sorts of sensuous operations that the old visual culture carefully uh, refrained from and uh, kept distant from. Uh, the week after the book came out, you suddenly heard professors starting talking about uh, the grain and the, the medium is the message and suddenly all these little slogans, you know, were all just being picked up, you know, like that and it became sort of rather uh, sort of mud. Why should in the TV age scuba diving or, or skin diving suddenly become popular? I, I would say right offhand, the reason is very simple. TV watching is scuba diving. I do believe he is a popularizer. I do believe in five years we will look back at this book and perhaps shrug our shows. I don't think it's uh, of long or lasting influence. The movie has become progressively better understood since TV. It has become an art form. It is uh, being given all sorts of special consideration and is even being used as a recruiting center for uh, political talent and other show business. I think he, um, Mr. McLuhan, seems to be awake to all of the media of modern life, certainly, and he, he understands perhaps either intuitively or with his very broad intelligence the meanings of the various major art movements, including pop art. Now that we have uh, an electric, uh, electronic sort of world, we live imaginatively in the old a frontier world of, uh, well, horse opera. Salinger was the great, great hero, and strangely enough, for another group, A.A. A. Milne. So it doesn't have to do with adulthood or uh, maturity necessarily. I believe some of these are fads. However, McLuhan, aside from <coughs> youngsters who are now involved with Lord of the Rings in the same way, uh, has some interesting things to say. And the fact that Madison Avenue got more involved with him than perhaps academia, and I'm talking about uh, faculty level at academia, <clears throat> I believe is revealing. The fact is the telephone speeds up all patterns of human interrelationship uh, so that all kinds of decision making, all kinds of organizational life inside business and in the community are changed completely. The writing style is extraordinarily up to date. It has a kind of swing to it that uh, uh, mediates between 
highfalutin scholarship and ad writing. And when you read that, although it doesn't read clearly all the way, somehow the, the, uh, the cumulative effect of it is that you understand much better than if you heard some stuffy scholar talking in a classroom. To me, this is his role. That, uh, he's, he's talking about goggles, you know. And everybody's got a set of goggles. Everybody thinks his own set was given to him by God and is universal, natural, and supposed to be. And what he's saying, he says, just for a minute, think of the possibility that maybe your set of goggles is, is a private, idiosyncratic set of goggles. And suppose that, that the generation before had a different set of goggles, and you got this set of goggles, and you both think you're looking at it the same way, and you're not. No, the praise is not completely unanimous. Though life has labeled him the oracle of the electric age, and the Herald Tribune said he may be the most important thinker since Newton, Darwin, Freud, and Einstein. He has also been called the high priest of pop culture, the in intellectual celebrity, and even that nut professor in Canada. People being excited by McLuhan is that he really has a great knack for developing slogans, you know, like the medium is the message and the channel and the information, those sorts of slogans, and they're very appealing. I really have nothing against Marshall McLuhan, except that um, he got everything from Norbert Wiener, who was uh, a mathematician. The medium I employ is the probe, not the package. That is, I tend to use phrases, I tend to use observations that tease people, that squeeze them, that push at them, that uh, disturb them, because I'm, t I'm really exploring uh, situations. I'm not trying to deliver some complete set of observations about anything. I don't think he makes a decision. I don't think he commits himself, which, uh, depending on your view of where our art is going, would either make him a, a potentially great artist or not one at all. I'm an investigator. I, I explore and I rather, uh, instead of explaining, I explore. Our time is a time for crossing barriers, for erasing old categories, for looking ahead. When, uh, when Car the Cartwrights were actually running uh, uh, USA, uh, say back in 1850, 1870, uh, people weren't living in, uh, on the frontier at all. They didn't live in Bonanza land when Bonanza land actually existed. They were living back in Jeffersonian democracy. Are you living in today's world? In the new electric world, where everybody is involved in everybody, where everybody is involved in complex processes that are e going on in the total environment, the old identity cards that used to constitute private identity, the old means of finding out who am I, uh, will not work. People uh, now have to encounter themselves in the inner world, uh, Kierkegaard or existential style, in order to know who they are. The old methods of merely external uh, identity by uh, marks of uh, occupation, national origin, age grouping, and so on, these will not serve any longer as means of distinguishing private identity. How much do you make? Have you ever thought about suicide? You are fast losing your private identity. Information is being collected about you, and it's being recorded in a corporate memory making up one big computerized gossip column that is unforgiving, unforgetful. And so it goes, every minute of every day. You are the mass man, the collective store of all that ever happened. The walls of your rooms are coming down. It's becoming a simple matter to wire and pick out of your homes your private once solely personal life, and record it. Bugging is the new means for gathering information. 
Who knows? Maybe you've been bugged for sound. It couldn't happen. What's that buzz? Privacy was almost unknown, uh, even in Shakespeare's day. It came in after that period, in the 17th, 18th centuries, and it was dependent upon uh, an architecture that uh, sealed off spaces. Uh, people didn't live in private spaces in uh, uh, earlier periods, and uh, it was with the coming of the book and uh, the need for uh, areas, in, uh, private areas in which to read and study and so on, that privacy gradually caught on as a value. I don't think privacy has quite the same meaning in our time that it used to have. I know, uh, for example, a big business in Toronto where all the private offices have been uh, dissolved, all the walls have been pulled out so that the um, participants in this business can sit together around tables in the middle of the big office space so that they can watch each other's responses to stocks, and, uh, world events and so on. They want a, a perpetual dialogue going on among themselves as a response to world events. The family circle has widened, Mom and Dad. The world pool of information constantly pouring in on your closely knit family is influencing them a lot more than you think. The instantaneous world of electric informational media involves all of us, all at once. Ours is a brand new world of all at once-ness. Time, in a sense, has ceased, and space has vanished. Like primitives, we now live in a global village of our own making. A simultaneous happening. Global village is not created by the motor car or even by the airplane. It's created by instant electronic um, uh, information movement. The global village is at once as wide as the planet and as small as a little town where everybody is maliciously engaged and poking his nose into everybody else's business. The uh, global village is a world in which uh, you don't necessarily have harmony. You have extreme concern with everybody else's business and much involvement in everybody else's life. It's a sort of Ann Landers column writ large. And uh, it uh, doesn't necessarily mean harmony and peace and quiet, but it does mean huge involvement in everybody's else, everybody else's affairs. And so the global village is as big as the planet and as small as... Uh, the village post office. For example, in the matter of, say, automation and jobs. Uh, information at electric speeds blows out all the pa uh, partitions between jobs, involves people in firms, in uh, operations that uh, are total and in inclusive, so that big business has discovered that instead of a person occupying a little specialist slot in the business, he, uh, it's better to be work with small teams that can take overall cognizance and consideration of the whole operation of the firm and um, come up with all sorts of new solutions for op for factors that affect the entire operation of the firm instead of just going ahead doing their little job uh, in the old uh, pattern same way with private lives uh, what had formerly been private life tends to become more and more corporate today the information level of education in the classroom is far below the level of modern home environment of electronic information. The reason that the 19th century child could take the curriculum and the uh, schoolroom of his time with some seriousness was that he knew there was a considerable relation between what was going on in the schoolroom and what was going on outside. That is no longer true. We still go on 19th century style with classified subjects, uh, instruction by stenciling on brain pans, and regurgitating in exam form. This is all 19th century factory system uh, schoolwork. 
but uh, the, the, it's no longer supported by the outside environment. The electronic environment makes an information level outside the schoolroom that is far higher than the information level inside the schoolroom. In the 19th century, the knowledge inside the schoolroom was higher than the knowledge outside. Today it is reversed. Uh, the child knows that in going to school he is, in a sense, interrupting his education. Education must shift from stenciled instruction to discovery, probing and exploration. The young today want roles. They want total involvement now, rather than just fragmented, specialized jobs or goals. How can our youth look forward to a specialized job when the computer world of automation may eliminate that job? The reason that our educational system is in crisis is because we don't know how to stop this flow of data, this one-way flow of data, onto the brain pans of the unfortunate uh, and helpless uh, students. All media or technologies work us over completely. They are so permeating throughout in their personal, political, psychological, moral, ethical, and social consequences that they leave no part of us untouched. Any new medium changes the image we have of our own bodies. For example, the motor car is a vast extension of our feet and, and uh, it's, uh, it turns you into a paraplegic with, uh, in a powered armchair as it were. Uh, but it changes completely the image we have of our bodies. With television, the image we have of our bodies is profoundly altered by the fact that the image goes inside us and this has had a profound effect on the motor car. The safety car is partly the response uh, that, or the effect of television on the motor car. Uh, involvement in the motor car in a new way makes people feel that it's something they ought to be able to control and in which, from which they might expect a certain degree of safety. Uh, this is very much a TV effect on motor car. It may destroy the motor car. But the uh, image we have of our own bodies is uh, completely altered by any new medium. Color television is not the old black and white television with color added. It is a new medium. It completely alters the image we have of ourselves. Our body percepts, as the psychologists say. Our body percept is something of which we are always unconscious. Your body percept changes directly with uh, any alteration in temperature, any alteration in sound, any, any alteration in input through any of the senses affects your body image. Of this you were completely unaware. Only a psychiatrist can really uh, make you aware of the image you have of your own body. <laughs>